cloud. Okay, all the rest of us turn off our cameras. All right, here we go, ladies. Anybody take a look at uh, any of the recordings so far? Not yet, not for a while. Okay, because I'm going yes. to be erasing them, so I I'm did. not keeping them all up there all the time. I watched oh. the old ones. Okay. All right, ladies, here we go. Okay. Who the fuck is it? Catherine Murphy. Catherine Murphy. Yes, Catherine, your attorney. Sarah, Sarah, are you okay? No, no, I'm not fucking okay. Catherine Murphy, my fucking attorney. Why did you let them out on bail? I didn't let them out. It was procedure. You didn't let them out? Then who let them out? Well, what are you talking about the standard procedure? Until a jury finds you guilty, you're free if you can post bail. You posted bail, that's the system. Well, fuck the system and fuck you too. Sarah, can I come in? I mean, that guy on TV, he made it sound like I did a live sex show. Well, that's not the last time that's going to happen. Can I come in, please? You really want to come in? Yes. You're sure? Yes. Okay. Come on in. Sure. The bartender at the dugout said you were sick. Well, the bartender should just shut the fuck up then. You're looking for me? Here I am. Yes, I see that. I was worried. Well, I had to go to the doctors and nobody at work knows. And what are you looking at? Nothing. I, I wasn't looking at anything. What, you don't like my apartment? I, I wasn't looking at anything. Okay. Okay. Would you like a seat or something? You want anything to drink? I mean, I know I could really personally abuse a drink. So. Uh, no, no, thank you. What, are you on the clock or something? Come on, live it up, Catherine Murphy, my attorney. Go a little crazy sometimes. No, thanks. You usually drink at three o'clock? Well, sometimes to smooth out the rough edges, but I mean, I'm sure you know how that is. Listen, though, I've been thinking, what time were you born? I already told you, I don't believe in astrology. Does it look like I give a shit? I mean, you believing in it doesn't matter. It's my believing in it that matters. So what time? At night, seven o'clock, August 9th. Where at? Portland. Do you always drink to take off the edges? Portland where? Portland, Oregon. Do you always have a drink to smooth out the edges? Portland, Oregon, August 9th, 7 p.m. Oh, I'm gonna need to get a year to you at some point. Sarah. No. Okay, no, I don't always drink. I mean, sometimes I'll take a little hit of pot or something. Why? Do you want some? No, thanks. Do you have, did you have anything to drink before you went to the mill or smoke anything? Half a joint, couple of beers, it was nothing heavy. Oh. While you were there? I don't know, okay, listen. I mean, it wasn't like I was falling over drunk or anything. Same. You know, I have to tell you guys did a great job. Um, Jennifer, I know this is an uncomfortable character for you, but I'm proud of you. You didn't judge her and you went for her. And, and I love this. This is the accused and it's a true story for all of you who are looking at it. Jodie Foster played the main role and she was brilliant in it. Um, Cause you never think of Jodie Foster as being sexy but she was so sexy in the opening scene. And Nancy, you were wonderful in it. You know, both of you really, you didn't judge the characters. And what I really liked is, is you didn't judge each other. 
And that's really important for this scene. Um, because if Nancy had judged you, it would have really made Nancy look bad. And if you had judged Nancy, it would have made you look bad. And neither one of you did. You were caught up in your own anguish, Jennifer. And Nancy, you were trying to get your client to chat with you. Now, um, Jennifer, do you know the story of what happens just in case? Yeah, um, okay. yeah, I'm aware of what happened here. And you do too, Nancy, right? Yeah, I saw the movie when it first came out, but I haven't seen it since. It's um, a, 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 it's based on a very true story of a girl who went in to, to buy a pack of cigarettes into a local bar. So um, the thing is, is that when you were asking her those questions and Jennifer was saying, I don't remember, or I don't know, it, it was the truth. You know, and, and so this whole thing is based on kind of, once again, the girl is asking for it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you're trying to get the truth from her. And, and Jennifer, with your lifestyle, you just didn't know. I mean, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. I mean, it shouldn't be based on your lifestyle, I guess, is what, what this was about. So, um... I didn't take very many notes. In fact, I didn't take any notes because I got totally into the scene. Oh, good. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> with what, yeah. With we thought for sure you'd come up with something. Yeah, we were, like, <laughs> we were like, well, I can't think of anything else we could go over, but Tony will probably have a lot of notes for us. So. None. I really think that whatever choices you made, they were really good. You know, and uh, I really loved your choice, Jennifer, of trying to get her off the subject by asking what her sign was. And Nancy saying, I don't believe in it, but still playing along with you so she could find out some information. Right, right. Because you're a tough nut. You're just a tough, you're in such anger and denial and, and rightfully so, mm -hmm. rightfully so. Um, because the papers have painted you out to be just, you know, a scum bucket, you know, you know, like, like poor white trash, which may be the truth, but you don't feel that way. Mm -hmm. And Nancy, um, you know, you took this on to really, as a woman's, I don't know, are you the, uh, were you appointed her, her attorney or did you take it on? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't remember. I didn't look it up, so. I think you need to make a choice because if you are the public defender, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say she elected to do it. That she I'm, I think so too because Jennifer doesn't seem to even know who you are. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I don't know what to say to you guys. I just really, really liked what you did. Okay. Um, <laughs> we'll take it so, though <laughs> yeah, yeah no so when that happens maybe you the actors need to to when i put you in the room to delve even deeper into each other and maybe um maybe i think i'd like for you guys to improvise this right now um as if you're talking to nancy for the first time jennifer in other words you're not quite so angry. You're trying to defend what you did. This will be your back life for why you're talking to her now. Does that make sense? In other words, don't go to where you are now in it. Go to where you first see your lawyer and you're telling her what happened. And Nancy, you're asking questions about it. Okay. Does that make sense? I think it's gonna really deepen these characters for you. So let's just try that real quickly. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Sarah. Uh, I'm Catherine Murphy. Um, I'm here to talk to you about your case. Um, can you um, tell me a little bit about yourself and what happened that night? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you already know the story, right? What happened? 
no, no, I really don't know all of it. I, I'd really like to hear it from you. And there's not much to tell. I just had a couple of beers. I was fine. This guy comes up, me and my friend, pays for our drinks. I go with them. There's other guys there. Well, what, what brought you to the bar to begin with? I mean, I'm assuming this is a bar and it's near where you live. Is that correct? Yeah, it was just me and my friend out together at night. It was nothing out of the ordinary. I mean, we've been there before. Uh huh. Just and you knew these men, or or no? no. You've never seen them before. No. I I didn't know. And they were. How did they treat you at first? They were friendly and nice, and everything. Was... Of course, they were nice. Uh huh. Why else would I go with them? Uh huh. They were uh -huh. fine, nice. Tell they weren't. So this was a, a neighborhood bar, friendly and yeah. I mean, I've been people, there before. People knew each other. You... I mean, it wasn't a small town, but mm -hmm. we've been there before. Me and my friend. Jennifer, toughen up a little bit more. Okay. But I mean, I never seen him before. Hmm. Well, um, what? What, just take me through this a little bit more in, in detail. You had a drink and I'm assuming you're having a good time. And what caused the situation to turn? I mean, I already kind of told you. Well, was there, there something that did, you know. See, my friend, we had a couple drinks. It wasn't anything crazy. And these guys come up acting yeah, nice. They, they say funny. something. They say something to you you didn't like? No, not at first. Why would I let them get close to me if they did? Well, and not at first, but then what were they saying to you? Just, did you start like arguing and having a fight? And, uh, no. No. It wasn't like that. Why yeah. else would I have gone with them? They were nice. They were nice to me. They were nice to my friend. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, how many drinks did you have? And uh, were you smoking something? I don't know, a couple beers, maybe a joint or two. It was nothing crazy. I keep telling people it was nothing crazy. I wasn't. Yeah. Um, how, how are you dressed? What did you look like? How was I dressed? Yeah. What kind of a question is that? Well, um, I think it might be important for the court case so we can document. Why would that be that important for the court case? Well, the, what the hell does that matter? Well, it was wearing. I could have been wearing nothing. I didn't ask for it. It doesn't well, matter. Yes, uh, but it. we have to see how the jury would react. Now, some people may have the impression if you're dressed a certain way, uh, in a certain way, that it's provocative. And that it doesn't fucking matter if it's provocative or not. Because what they did is wrong, and they should be locked up forever for that. Yeah. Well, um, you know, the, I, I know the law and the law sometimes may seem kind of tough to you and not right, but it's the law and that's what we have to work with. And you, if you were wearing something low cut or too sexy, there you're gonna hear some defense argument that you, you were asking for it. And I know you don't wanna hear that, but that's my, that might be just how the jury interprets it. Asking for it. Hmm. That's the fucking yeah, thing that, you, that's, you know that's out there in the world. A girl, a girl wears a skirt too short and she's asking for it. Okay. Yes. And 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 I have to get this out of you. I've got to know exactly what you and what if, and if what, I was I need to know this, Sarah. I need to know this to be able to defend you properly and to counteract all these defense arguments that are going to be made to to uh, call into question your character. That's what they're going to do. I, I, I'm not saying that that's right or that's fair, but that's how the system works. That's the standard pr procedure. And I know you don't like it. Sometimes I don't like it, but we have to work with what we're given. And I, I'm really interested in, in knowing you better, knowing what happened that night so I can take your case on. And so what if I was wearing something to revealing, provocative, whatever, and I was, for instance, asking for it, then what, they would get let go? 
they would never get locked up? No, 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 because we would, fault? they wouldn't do anything wrong. Yes, we would introduce other evidence that would point to their character and call into question their judgment. And we don't, I don't know what their backgrounds are, um, but I would certainly bring that up and also point out that no, of course not. If you're wearing what you normally wear, that's an acceptable outfit for your time and your neighborhood and being in this bar, then of course not. But that is, as we would say, standard operating procedure and you would, they would not hold that against you. Or I would try to defend you in that way that they wouldn't hold that against you. That they would say, that is, that's your normal attire. And Good. That, you know, this was fascinating. I mean, I, I really feel, Nancy, that you've got a really hard job with her. <laughs> yeah. But she's not forthcoming because in reality, she was wearing tight shorts and a little crop top, but, but it was hot out. You know, I mean, in that her is. neighborhood, she was just going to a local thing. And so um, I don't know if you guys want to, when you go into the breakout room, switch roles. So yeah, Jennifer... Okay. Jennifer can feel how hard it is to pull information from this woman because she feels judged before she's even judged. And for a lawyer, it's deadly. I mean, you're struck that with all those questions you asked her were brilliant, Nancy. You'd make a great lawyer. You asked really good questions. And Jennifer was highly uncomfortable with it because you know, her lifestyle is not conservative right. by the book lifestyle, you know. And the only thing that she did do was she was having a good time and dancing very sexy, you know, with a guy. That was it. Big deal. You know, and he took it too far. So excellent work, guys. I'm really proud of you. Uh, anybody uh, want to say anything before um, we go on to the next scene? Before breakout room? I, I just love this work. That was super intense. You guys did awesome. Thanks. That Dave. was great. That it was really good. good. I really enjoyed it, guys. I did too. Did you enjoy their improv a bit? Yeah, they, I was talking. Well, the, the scene was intense, but even the, the improv just had a level of... Uh, like realism in a real like palpable tension and it was good it was really good i really enjoyed it barbara danny interest very interesting because uh, yeah i'm doing the continuation of the scene right right after and i think noelle and i have a completely different take on it but but that's we'll, great we'll see no, yeah no. What, really you guys, <laughs> what you what you will see is good actors will bring different characters and different aspects. And that's what makes casting very hard. It makes it an art form <clears throat> just because of that. So that's excellent, Barbara. So let's bring up you and Noel, okay? Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Okay, just a minute, and just a minute. All right, kids. <laughs> Good yawn, Noel. Turn your, turn your, yeah. Sorry. Turn. Good yawn. Good yawn, girl. We're all going to be yawning now after that wonderful yawn you just did <laughs> <laughs> okay hot is it really hot there no no i was trying to open my eyes oh <laughs> here we go how were you dressed what the fuck is that supposed to mean means were you dressed provocatively you showing a lot of cleavage, see-through blouse. What the fuck difference does it make? I mean, I could have been wearing a nun's habits for all they care, 
they would turn it off me. But did how you dress make them think they could have sex with you? Wait, what the? F did you put on a show? What the hell are you talking about? You saw me at the hospital, right? What, you think I asked for it? If that's what you think, you get the hell out of my house. And why didn't you tell me you had a record? Fuck you. I ain't got no records. You want to tell me about it? All right. Look, I was helping my friend moving, you know, with the U-Haul. And then we ran into this cop, right? And he sees we have a broken tail. He pulls us over and starts going through her desk and all sort of stuff. Okay. He finds a half gram of Coke. It wasn't a lot, but it was her desk, not mine. Okay. It was her car, not mine. So you didn't ask for it. So why is it still in the books? Well, I don't fucking know. That's your job. You tell me. I mean, you know the standard procedure, right? They say they will, it will be whatever. Expunged, expunged. Yeah, expunged, yeah. Have you ever made love to, the, to more than one man at a time? What different kind of question is this? It's the kind of question that you're gonna be asked on the stand. You're also gonna be asked if Larry or any other man has ever uh, hit you and if you liked it. You're gonna be asked about your drug bust and how many drinks you had, to, how many drinks you have every day to smooth out the edges and how many joints and how often you go to bars alone and whether or not you wear underwear when you go to them and which diseases you've caught and how many abortions you've had. And I will object to all those questions. And sometimes the judge will sustain me and sometimes not. Well, you got a really amazing system here, Catherine Murphy. Sarah, you're a witness. And it's the defense's job to show to the jury that you're a rotten witness because you've got a rotten character. Oh, you think I got a rotten character? No, Sarah, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that's what they're going to say. You ain't got to defend me because I'm so low as bimbo, right? I didn't say that. Oh, Jesus Christ, why is this so difficult with you? That's because you're fucking Libra. That's why. <laughs> because you make me, you make me have to be strong with you so you get it. But I'm tough on you so I can be even tougher on me and on them. Look, I'm on your side, Sarah. Don't you get it? Don't you believe that? Will those bastards go to jail? Is that what you want? I want this motherfucker to put away forever. Well, Sarah, we finally agree on something. No, you aren't listening. I want them put away forever. You got that? I'm listening. I got it. And that's what we'll do. Seems. Oh, she's a tough cookie, isn't she? So you both again did a great job. Noelle, let me ask you. Yes. Why do you think? Why do you think? I mean, I know why why your character is so angry. Um, but why do you think you fight your lawyer so much? Do you think that you are a fighter? No. I mean, I think the situation uh, make, I mean, we, 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 we talked about actually our relationship with Barbara. Yeah. 
and I think she had an important point. She said like it was like like if if um like mother daughter, but not really but like like I'm trying to find her so bad, and she's just trying to defend me. And what else? Okay, well that's a really good answer. So let me ask you this: Do you think you have a good relationship with your mother? It's a good question. Because no. I, yeah, great choice, Noelle. So you see that, that's a great choice. So it would bring up all that stuff, you know, that you've gone through with mom, you know, and uh, you can use it. I don't mean from your real life, I mean, as a character that, you know, her choices, she's had a rough life with her parents. I mean, you're pretty much raised yourself maybe on your own. Um, so, um, you know what happened? You've seen this movie, right? No, I know what happened though, but I haven't seen the movie. Barbara, I did you tell happened. her what happened? Uh, yeah, I told her. She she was gang raped on a pool table. She was doing a dance on the pool table in this bar that she goes to all the time. She got well, a little. She wasn't, on, she wasn't on the pool table. She was just dancing on the dance floor. But it was oh. a very sexy dance. I mean, right. really sexy. But she got gang raped on the pool table. That's all I remember. By a bunch of college students. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, but the guy who started the rape was not a college student. He was just a creepy, you know, motherfucker, excuse the word. He, he was creepy and he got the college kids involved. So these college kids are fighting for their lives because uh, one of the kids ran out and telephoned the police right away. So they were caught. Um, so here we have a real problem of parents in the community fighting the police because their kids had never gotten into trouble before saying that she, she, by doing that beautiful, sexy dance on the dance floor, incited them, Noelle. So, you know, at what point can a woman express herself without inviting rape is really, I think, the just of this movie and the just of the whole thing. And, um, so I would use some other thing because Barb is just working her ass off like Nancy to, to educate you. And I don't think you're uneducated. I just think, Noelle, you're streetwise. And there's a difference. What does you that mean? Know? Sorry. Well, I'm, I don't think you're uneducated. In other words, I think you're a very smart, streetwise woman. What streetwise mean? Meaning that, you know, if there's trouble around you, you're not going to, you're going to walk away from it. Okay. You know what I mean? You're not going to ask for the trouble. You're, you're, you're smart enough to perceive trouble and, and get away from it. However, you didn't. And that's what, what this whole thing is about for your lawyers is why didn't you? What was going on? Were you stoned? Were you drunk? Why, what, what was happening? And so I think I'm going to have you guys do an improv too. Um, uh, Barbara, I, I enjoyed your, your lawyer. It's hard to play a lawyer. I've played lawyers. It's very difficult. And I think you can help Noelle a little bit by maybe being a little motherly here and there, wherever you choose. Like you did right there when you leaned forward and said, but you're making it so hard for me. I'm trying to help you. That would maybe help Noelle hit her button to hit your buttons. Do you know what I mean? Every time you try, there's something, there's a, ver, there's a verbiage. An abused child does not understand kindness. Mm -hmm. I think Noelle's an abused child. Mm -hmm. 
And when you, every time you try and help her even a little bit more, she can't understand what you want, you know? Mm -hmm. So maybe we should improv this. What do you say, girls? Uh, improv what exactly? Yeah, I think, I think maybe again, uh, not the same way Jennifer and Nancy did, but maybe it's right after the incident, Noel, and uh, and this this lawyer has entered the room and said to you, "I'm going to help you," and maybe even taking you over to a side table, you know, to, to to try and help you in this incident right now. And you're filled with with craziness, you know, um, of what's just happened to you. And and again, she reminds you of your mother. So do you trust her? Do you don't trust her? And and Barbara, you're a professional. You're trying to judge how you're going to get this information out of her. And maybe don't even ask her about the incident. It might be interesting for you to ask her about her back life. Where'd she come from? What were her parents like? You know, what's going on? And Noelle, in your anger, you might ask Barbara about her back life. Do you know what I mean? It's like a ping pong tournament here so that you both can find out a little bit about each other. You want to so try that? A little bit before the scene or after the scene? Now. No, but I'm saying like we do like a, like this, like what we want to do right now is like a little before the scene, after the scene, oh. it doesn't matter. No, this is. It's just another scene. It's just another scene. It's Another right team? after, oh. right? Maybe I visit you in the hospital. Okay. You know, and you're, you're, you know, you're playing a ping pong game. I mean, really, when she sets your buttons off, you ask her about her past life. What, what made her a lawyer? It's, you're trying to find common ground and you can't with each other or can. Let's see what happens. Hi, Sarah. I'm, I'm Catherine. I I just want to ask you a few questions. I'm, I'm going to take on your case. I'm going to make sure that uh, we get those guys that did this to you. So, but I got to ask you a few questions. So, I hope you can answer them. Okay. Yeah, it depends on the question. I'm going to be honest. I, I don't really trust you guys, the system and all. I don't know. I'm not sure. Just. Go ahead. And you probably you probably don't trust anybody right now. I I wouldn't, <laughs> but I am here to help you. So, just bear with me, would you? So, when did you become a lawyer? Oh gosh, it's it's been about ten years now. Oh, yeah, but I I really really um, my whole. <laughs> My whole dream is to help women stand up for themselves and to change the system. So I, I want you to trust me and I want you to understand that I'm with you. But this is going to be tough because of the society that we live in. So did you ask to get this case or did they force you to take it? No, no, I want to take the case. I asked to take the case. So where do you work, Sarah? I work at this, at this place where they, they sell clothes and, and furniture and it's on the fifth What? You're in retail? So yeah, yeah. Huh? How far did you go in school? Where do you leave? Pretty close, actually. Just the next town over. You have a husband. I'm divorced. Oh. Do you have a boyfriend? No. Is that hard? Yes, being divorced is hard sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes I'm better off. She didn't even get married at her first time. 
But yeah. So. So what Sarah, do what do you like? Do? What do you like to do in your spare time? Uh, hanging out without what is that? What is getting that mean? rape, huh. if possible. I am so sorry that happened to you. Really? You are? I really am. And I, I know it's hard to talk about it. How would you know? How do you know anything about this? You don't even know me. I don't know you. And, but okay, so stop I'm also, and trying to look, act like you care about me, please. Sarah, I'm a woman. And... <laughs> I have background too, okay? We don't have to go into details right now, but if I'm gonna be your lawyer, I need to know as much as I can about you. Because, you know, those other guys, the, those guys, defense lawyers, they're gonna put you through the mill. And I need you to understand that it's not gonna be easy. We are gonna get them, but it's not gonna be easy. You, you look like you scare about the lawyers, the case, everything. No, no I'm not scared. Are you good I'm, at your job? I'm very good at my job, but I'm scared for you because I don't Why? want them, because I think their lawyers are going to put you through hell. And well, I want I'm ready to for that. I've already been to hell because of them. Okay. So they're going to ask you all kinds of horrible questions like, how are you dressed? Did you have too much to drink? Do you always drink? What's your character Wait, on, like? I, I don't understand what related with the case. Like, what does it matter? It doesn't matter to us. It doesn't matter to you and I. It matters to the jury because the jury's gonna. Well, it shouldn't because. Of course it should. I want... Of course See it should. See how frustrated you guys are? Mm -hmm. Matt that's where it's at yeah. i mean barbara you're trying to help her and she's not helping herself mm -hmm. and uh um i think that's what's the most interesting part of it of these characters is that um uh why is she why is noel so um unresponsive to someone trying to help her and that's what we've got to get to, you know. Why is that? Um, and I think that's that that that's this improv really showed it. I mean, she would you were just dying trying to get anything out of her. And Noel, how, how were you feeling about that? You were just, you know, you could. It seemed like you didn't care. You felt like you were defending yourself, but not defending yourself, and. It's um, what makes a woman do that? And you that's what, what you, Noelle, you need to ask yourself, why are you so resentful of oh. someone trying to help you? <clears throat> because you are, no matter how we look at it, you just are. Honestly, okay, so I, I'm not sure because I don't know if she's mad because of what happened because she's like you were saying a strong woman she knows da, 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 and this happened and she she didn't know it will happen in her life and she and it's so unfair because everybody's asking her a question that shouldn't be asked like how were you dressed and were you being seductive whatever so i think that's why she mad but i guess her background too like you say with her mom so maybe make it even oh. harder for her this is where I want to point out to all of you. The writers will always give you a little hint. And there was a hint when, uh, I don't know if it was this scene or the scene before, when the lawyer says, why didn't you tell me you had a record? Yeah, I say that. And I think that's the, that is a huge hint that, Noel, you feel like a victim. You're always a freaking victim. It wasn't your car. It wasn't your Coke. You know, yet it's still on your record. You've been trying to fight that. 
you know, um, you know, your victim. And God damn it, you're tired of being a victim. You know, if you want to go outside in your shorts and go into a bar and get a pack of cigarettes and drink a beer and enjoy dancing, why the hell can't you? Again, once more, you were made a victim. So I think there's a little, just, a, you know, it's just a little bit of a hint that the, the writer writes. And I want you guys to start looking for these little hints in the writing to help you with your characterizations. But you both did a great job. You both of you did. I mean, it's so fast. I really loved your improv, just like I loved uh, Nancy's and uh, Jennifer's. It was so intriguing to watch the improv of this. I, I am enjoying it thoroughly. And I'm sure other people are. Does anybody have anything they want to share on this or? Yeah, no, I, I, I enjoyed that too. I mean, I, I was really watching it very carefully. I, when you did your scene, um, Barb, I didn't think it was that different a tone from I didn't the way either. Jennifer and I did it. You thought it was going to be so different and I didn't pick up on that. I felt you can continue to be like calm, professional, asking hard questions, trying to get her to focus and Noel was all over the, I guess I should show my face here. <laughs> and Noel was, you know, angry and all over the, you know, emotional and, and fighting you on that. Um, and I thought your questions, Barb, were terrific too in the, yeah. the improv. I mean, I really, I was in, in, I mean, Noel's attitude and everything was just so, I was, I, as Tony said, you know, I could see the frustration. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that's carrying over from doing the first scene too. It's just, mm. so I, I thought you guys did a great job. I really did too. And Noel, the other thing is, is I think you are totally humiliated. I mean, you have been stripped bare. All these people saw it. People were cheering the guys on. Do you understand? They were cheering these guys on to screw you. You don't even know who they were. You wouldn't even know them if you were walking down the street because you couldn't see them. And it's just like, it, it's right next door to your house. I mean, you feel like you can't even go in there now to have a drink late at night or you know calm the edges down. I mean, it's really, a horrible humiliation as a human being as well as a woman. So I think that needs to come into, I mean, you're being tough because everything's been broken and you're trying to like a puppet, bring your arms and your hands and your legs back together again. Plus the newspapers have attacked you and made you look like, you know, you were asking for it. Any other uh, reactions, you guys? Yeah, it's Jennifer. A, I, oh, sorry, Danny, did you want to go? Oh, uh, yeah, I was just going to say, I, I think the, the improv was just as good as the scripted part. It Wasn't really it? It had me curious, yeah. And it had me curious, I'm still curious as to why your character is so uh, combative with, uh, you know, or, or you know what I mean? It, it, it had me very intrigued, and, you know, interesting. Very good. I think I think some of that also is that she equates the attorney with the other side, you know, that that's an authority figure. And that's a little yeah, right. part, of, part of the resistance and distrust. So, yeah. And, and Barb, I thought it was great doing the, you know, just calm and just asking questions. And I saw the, the maternal instinct and trying to be nice and trying to bring it out of her. I mean, I saw all of that. Yeah, really good, you know. Uh, Danny, uh, uh, Jennifer, what were you going to say, honey? Oh, yeah, I was going to say that. Well, I was really looking forward to seeing the scene because it's obviously a continuation of what yeah. Nancy did. And um, yeah, I thought you guys did a really, really great job with it. I thought it felt different, but it still really worked. Like, obviously, it didn't feel like the same continuation of our scene. It almost felt like a totally different thing. And it was really interesting watching it and like kind of knowing the characters a little better because I really liked you guys' relationship because it felt more like you guys maybe were willing to talk to each other rather as me and Nancy were like kind of like 
especially in the beginning, like I didn't want to answer any of her questions, you know, and this was a little different. And then I loved your improv too, because I think you had, Barbara, you had really great questions and Noelle, you had really great answers. So I really enjoyed it, guys. Yeah, and you can see how hard it would be for a casting director to cast it because everybody was so believable. Just really, really believable. Yeah, that was the other thing I would say. It felt very, very much like a real conversation. Yeah. Very realistic. And that's a hard scene to do too. And it's hard to make it feel real like that. And you guys did a really good job with that. I would suggest to all of you to, you know, when you go into that uh, breakout room to pull out that back, back live character history paper and just pick, you know, four or five uh, questions on it and answer it. Do you know what I mean? What kind of family did you come from? I mean, I get the feeling in the Wells case, trailer park, whereas in Jennifer's case, maybe a, a adopted family or, you know, through the system. I mean, it's interesting to start to do that. You'll see the characters really even come more alive. So I, I, I would suggest that for you guys. Tony, you had suggested we go and break out the rooms to do the uh, switch characters, but it, yeah. if we come back, do you want to see us do different characters or just stay in the same character? That oh we... no, you're gonna stay in the same okay. character. Okay, and the, yeah. the other thing I wanna say about it being different is that the, the script really shifts a lot to me from the first four pages to the second because it's getting more intense with the question. Barb's asking the really difficult questions at that point. I don't think I am so much. I'm just getting to know her and trying to get her to talk to me. But Barb's oh, asking. No, you're asking her. No, you know, you're a lawyer, Nancy. I'll tell you something. Lawyers don't have time. You know, especially if you're an elected lawyer, you don't have time to spend with, you sure. know, pulling out this information, a lot of lawyers would have just walked away, just well, said, you know, I don't want to deal with it. Oh, I was talking about what, what people are picking up with the differences between how Jennifer and I did it and Barb and how all did, did their scene. And to me, the script got, um, the questions got a lot tougher and more direct and more personal in the last four pages than the first part. That's what uh, I talked to. Yeah. And I, and, but in terms of the tone, overall tone and type of character, I didn't, I didn't necessarily see a huge difference from playing the first, from playing the characters in the first part to the second part. It was just, it got really, you know, asking the, the tough questions like, what were you, you know, what, what were you wearing, you know, and, and getting into that horrible part of <laughs> that kind of questioning. So that's just my take on it. Well, here's a question for both lawyers. I think you already know what she was wearing. Probably. So they need to hear the way that the, their client's gonna answer this. Right. Mm -hmm. Because you've read the report, you know. No, I, I know a lot about, I know a lot about Sarah, but I have to prepare her to right. answer these questions from the other lawyer. Right. So that's another thing that you guys need to bring in. I mean, she's a tough one. She is a tough cookie, mm -hmm. you know? Good work. Okay, let's bring up Steven and Kenny. Where are they? There's my Steven. Okay. Pin. And, pin. and Kenny. There's Here. my Kenny. And there's Kenny. Oh. <laughs> I'm trying to be a judge. Well, there you are. Oh, just want to stay back there. There. Well, um, you know what you could do is do it the other way, Stephen. Yeah, oh. that's probably smarter. That's why you teach the class and I take it, right? <laughs> I don't know, but I think it's a little bit easier for you. So you're not drowning yourself because they sometimes show their collars, you know. There you yeah. go. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. You ready, Ken? Oh, yeah. 
Then I'm sit sorry. up straight, Ken, because uh, you're not in camera a lot. Ken. Uh, how about this? Then lower your camera a bit. Lower my camera like this. Right there. Leave it there. That's fine. Okay. Well, pull it down more if you're going to sit back more, Kenneth. Oh, okay. Oh, I just sit like, like this. Okay. How about now? No, you're much lower than Stephen. Oh, I'm much lower than this? How about now? Uh, now? Pretty much looks the same, but okay. Okay. Um, All right. What happens to the light? <laughs> Hold on a second. Oh, one second. Okay. You good? Good. All right. <clears throat> now, Mr. Harrison, do you feel like answering some questions? Yes, I do. I'll try to keep them uninflammatory. You're too kind. Not at all. I would prefer the hanging judge. <laughs> Either way, I decide I am a hanging judge. Now, Mr. Harrison, the medical director and the psychiatrist claim that you are not capable of making an informed decision. That's right. They're wrong. What does that mean? It means that they're good doctors, but they won't let a patient die if they could help it. Do you think you are suffering depression? Well, I'm completely paralyzed. I think I would be insane if I wasn't depressed. Yeah, but wanting to die must be strong evidence that your mental state has gone far beyond simple depression. I and do not want to die. Then what the hell is this case all about? I make that read, what is this case all about? Uh, there was a hell and I believe he says shit. So you might want to cross that out. Sorry. I do not want to die because as far as I'm concerned, I'm dead already. I really want the doctors to recognize that fact. I cannot believe that this condition constitutes life in any sense of that word. Legally, you're alive. I think I can even challenge that. Any reasonable definition of life is the idea that it would be self-supporting. Now, isn't it true that in the heart transplants cases, it's illegal to take someone's heart if they can only be kept alive by respirator and other medical advice? There also has to be no brain activity at all, and yours is certainly working. Certainly working, and certainly sanely. That's what we're here to decide. Your Honor, I'm not asking anyone to kill me. I'm only asking to be discharged from this hospital. Which will kill you. And that's exactly my point. I'll spend the rest of my life in this hospital with everything in it geared to keeping me my brain alive and I will never have the possibility whatsoever of being able to direct a good goddamn thing. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that's an act of deliberate cruelty. Wouldn't it be more <laughs> cruel for society to let people die when, with some effort, it could save them? No, no. Because the cruelty is not a question of saving someone's life or letting them die. The cruelty is that the choice is removed by the person concerned. I would like to decide myself what happens to my body. A man who is desperately depressed is not capable of making a reasonable choice. Well, as you said, Honor, that's the question to be decided. All right. You tell me. You tell us. Why is it a reasonable choice that you decide to die? All right, all right, all right. The most important part of my life was my work. And my most valuable asset I have for that 
Was it my imagination? No. It's just too damn bad that my mind wasn't paralyzed with my body. Now my mind, which was my most precious possession, has become my enemy and it tortures me. It tortures me with thoughts of what I have been and what might be to come. And I can feel my mind very slowly breaking up. Now, we take women, for example. I used to, I used to love. Love what they were and how they thought and how they smell. And now I dread it when they come into the room because I loathe the way they make me feel. You know, I'm, I'm filled with an absolute sense of the outrage that you who have no knowledge of me whatsoever has the power to condemn me to a life of torment because you cannot see the pain. There's no blood, there's no screaming, because you cannot see the pain. Your Honor, if you saw a mutilated animal on the side of the road, you'd shoot it. I'm only asking for the simple lack of stability you give to that animal. And I'm not asking anyone to commit an act of violence. Just take me somewhere and leave me. And if you don't, if you don't, then you come back here in five years and see what a piece of work you have done here today. Mr. Harrison, you gave us a lot to think about. Take a five minute recess and we'll come back. Wow, that was intense. Yeah. Jeez. It's really sweaty under that towel. Well, yeah. Oh my God. Jeez. So is Kenneth paralyzed totally except for his brain? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That was really, you did a really good job, Kenneth, and you did a really good job listening, Stephen, you know? I mean, I'm just curious, as a human being, Stephen, what would you have voted for? At me personally or the character? I don't know. Well, the character. Let's talk about him first. He's important. The character? Um, I think... Uh, I think he feels a like a, a a sense of purpose and principle with laws, and that, I mean he's a judge, so he must you know he takes that very seriously. Um, I, so I, I think you you're you are I I, I take uh, I take that very seriously. You know I uphold the letter of the law, but it's written the way it is, so that's what I believe. Um, but through Kenneth really pleading his case and really chipping away. I believe I'm starting to, and I, I, I could feel the way I portrayed it was I was really softening on my stance on that. It was more, you know, he's really starting to change my mind and what I would have perceived uh, like previously or before the case even started. Let me ask you this, Stephen. Um, that's really good. Isn't it, a, or isn't your hands tied as a, as a judge? You can a judge give permission for someone to die. I I wonder don't if your know. Are, yeah, I wonder if your hands are tied. Isn't that the whole Dr. Kevorkian situation? I don't know if right? It yeah. Absolutely you're very bright. It absolutely is and quite frankly, I I always believed in Kevorkian because there any of us who lost anybody to cancer or the a demise like Kenny's going through, there should be a way just like with our dogs or our cats that we could humanely let them go. And I don't know if your hands are tied or not. 
I mean, I think he's saying you've given us a lot to think about that you're going to go check that. Yeah. Yeah, as a, yeah. So let's talk to you, Kenneth. Yeah. What was your life before this? You were in Just, advertising or what? Um, so I, I was a, a film director. So I, I do creative oh, yeah. works and I probably very well established in my field, well respected. So I have very colorful life, women, money, and all the freedoms to create things I, I like to create. So, how old do you think you are, Kenneth? Uh, I think. Uh, Let's use your age. Use you don't my have. Age. Oh. Your, yeah, your your age. Okay. Wouldn't it be really even more hard for you to face this judge of Stephen's age range, mm -hmm. who's young, bright, yeah. handsome? Yes. I think that that should be part of it too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the fact that he's got his life ahead of him, he's young, he's handsome, yes. you're young and handsome, you, you know, but your life is over, it's done, it's through, there's, yeah. there is no, whew, yeah. you know. It's, it's really sad. Hmm. So, um, I would like to see an improv of this. Kenneth, okay. it, I thought you really made me feel like you were almost in a lung machine and I loved it. I, I felt like you really created a wear for me. Uh -huh. Like, you know, the bottom half of you was in a lung machine of some yeah. sort. And this was the only part of you. Yeah. And, um, you know, Stephen, I'd like to see more of the struggle with you. As okay. a young man realizing, oh my God, this is, you know, his mind is still active. Everything's still going on. Um, I think the most moving part of this for me, Kenneth, yes. is when you describe the feeling for a woman. Oh, okay. Because it's devastating to hear. You know, this poor man who was brilliant and popular and powerful and now... Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. there's nothing left. You know, it's very, very important. Yes. I'm so, let's, let me see the improv of this. Okay. Sure. And the improv of this could be um, the judge having you in his quarters. Um, asking you guys could be talking to each other about you know Stephen what is it like for him what do you feel like in there what how did this happen to you when did this happen to you uh you know and Kenneth maybe you learning a little bit about you know what age did he become a judge and you know what constitutes this for him you know what how did he get all this power? Because I, I suspect, Stephen, you are a medical, a very specific kind of judge, you know, that your forte is medicine and medical. Because I don't know if a regular judge could judge this. I don't know. We'll find out. Maybe he can by the what you say. Okay. Mr. Harrison, I want to thank you with, uh, you know, meeting me here. I, I, I greatly appreciate it. Yeah. Nope, not a problem. I just wish you could. Oh, I just wish you can vote on my favor. That's all I'm asking for. I understand that. You know, I, uh, this isn't a very normal circumstance, but, you know, given your uh, career uh, before the accident and everything, I just, you know, wanted to get a chance to, to talk to you a little bit more and understand not more about this case, but also uh, more about what this case is about. And yeah, you. so uh, we'd just sure. like to, to learn more about you. Before, now, you start, before you start, may I ask you a question? Absolutely. Uh, why, 
why did you, how old are you, kid? You, you look like way <laughs> younger than me. So how long have you been a judge? Why did you want to go to law school? Uh, you know, I was pushed at a young age to, to pursue law, something that, I don't know, that law can come naturally, but it technically, you know, but it did, especially, you know, medical law growing up in a house full of doctors, you know, a different kind of pressure. They push you hard. Um, I'm young. I'm the youngest, you know, yeah. doctor you can, uh, or judge that you can find around here. It was specializing in medical, but, you know, in my mid thirties doing this is absolutely not normal. Um, but it seems like everything around this case doesn't seem normal. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you asking, you know, you asked me that I want to know what before, obviously before everything happened, what, what was it that drove you to this career? You're a man who got famous from his imagination. Yeah. Um, just, you know, want to understand a little bit more about that. Yeah, I think very much like you. Because so, uh, before I answer the question, may I make a conclusion for you just told me that um, you had a goal and you made that come true and you achieved your goals at a very young age. And you have a very promising future. Can I make that kind of assumption based on on what you just told me? You, you I feel like that would be a fair <laughs> assumption. Yes. Okay. Then, um, then I can tell. Then I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. Ever since, ever since I was four, I was able to tell good stories. I remember all my cousins, my parents. They were surround me, listening to my story, even when I didn't know that many words. My vocabulary wasn't that big. It grew stronger and stronger with time. By the age of 11, I was able, I was able to write a screenplay already. A stage theater. I have some theater work at school. I wrote it. I direct them. Well. I was popular. I think I think I can say I was popular at school back then. I played Sounds basketball. Like it. Yeah, I played basketball too. So I play music, I direct, I play, I record, I write. That's everything I did. Everything I'm everything I did, yes. I will still love to do. So you know. Most of people graduating from film school could even make it less than 1%. I got a job even before I graduated at the age of 19. I stole my first screenplay, a feature film, at the age of 21. I, ever since I was four, I knew that was something I want to do. I want to be the filmmaker. I want to create, I want to tell the best story ever told to this world. And I did it. I did. And, you uh, certainly did. did. At such yeah. a young age, too. Yes. That's why I find this case so but, peculiar in so many ways. Yes. The but parallels between us. Things unexpected to happen. Shit happens, I know. Shit happens. I was, uh, I was just riding horse. You know, I've been riding horse ever since I was 10. For whatever reason, I, it might be very painful for me to collect the memory of that day, but all I knew was I was on the horse like a wild, I run like a wild cowboy. And um, the next thing I remember, I was in the hospital. And I never left the hospital. From I can understand. I never used my finger again. I have, people have to feed me from the tube. Yeah, that's not the life. That's not the life you can imagine. Stephen, stop touching your mouth. And how long has this been going on? How long have you been in the hospital? 
what's wrong, what to see. I lost count of days, but if I have to say that was the year ever since that my last nomination, and this is the 40s, um, it's been six years. Wow. Six, six years, and we all, Your Honor, we all know that it's not going to get better. I am well, meant- you know, the advances in medical science, you know, they, they make breakthroughs every single day. There's, we both there's know no chance that, to give up. That's based on a lot of questionable assumptions, right? So, Your Honor, may I ask you one question? Since we have a of lot of things in common, we both are over, overachievers at a young age. What if you, what if everything you work so hard for, what is everything you enjoy, the, the power, the prestige, and the things you enjoy doing right, right now, deciding on people's life, has been taken away just immediately, and you never have the chance to do what you love, to see what you love. Anything and enjoy will be taken away from you immediately, and all you know is you're gonna live, you're gonna live a long time without everything you love, without everything you ever enjoy with no possibility of getting out. So all you can do is sit there and wait, waiting, waiting for the unexpected day to die. Would you, would you like that to happen to you? Obviously not. And I can't pretend like I am in your situation or know about your situation. I can certainly empathize with your situation. Um, so but why do you want to do that to me? I, there, it's not a question of me wanting to do something to you, Mr. Harrison. It's a question of whether legally you can do this. There are hard, fast rules for this. There are, there are legal issues at hand. There's a reason that this is being brought up in front of you. Today. As much as I would not like to take this case, Mr. Harrison. Good. This is not something... It's really good. You know, I actually would like you guys to change roles when you go into the breakout room. Okay. Okay. You know, I think that would be really interesting. Um, and if we have time, Stephen, I'd like you to play the Kenneth's role too, besides sure. the, you know. Okay. Danny, come on in. I don't know where Marcos is. He, he sent me a letter. He, he sent me a text saying he's going to be here at 840. 10 minutes. I don't know. See if he does. And 10 he minutes? Jesus. Yeah, he sent that about an hour ago. God. Um, it just upsets me. You about, yeah. Um, yeah. What 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 part are you doing, Danny? I'm so sorry. What what was the uh, hold on? What was the play? It was a scene from Donnie Brasco. Right. And I uh, and I was playing Donnie, and uh, Marco was playing Lefty. Um, I guess we can give it a few more minutes. We did rehearse it a couple times, so. Uh, well, if you yeah, want to wait, um, do you uh, do you want to have a Stephen, uh, you know, or Kenneth do it with you, or anything like that? Yeah, maybe so. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know if he's going to make it or not. So, yeah, can you send Stephen? Are you there? Stephen, do you think you could do uh, the Johnny Brasco scene with uh, Danny? Of course. Danny, Absolutely. Can you, can you send it to Stephen right now? Um, I'd have to figure out how. Um, I'm sure I could. Okay. Yeah, I just need to find the, yeah. Can, can you email it to him? Yeah. I'll, um, all right, Stephen, let now. me know when you get the email, okay? And then I'm going to 
have you guys, you two read it, just cold read it for me. You got it. I'm going to freeze. My screen is going to freeze as I open my email. I'm still right. here, I'm not going anywhere. Just want to warn you in case I got a can really- Can you see me? I, I, I can yeah, see I, I, I still, I, okay. Yeah, we see you. Yes, you should, you should well, put right. your phone, your emails. Oh, he cannot hear me. Um, what is your email address, Stephen? Oh, it's a doozy. Uh, uh, it is Stephen. Or at least. It's S-T-E. It's my name that appears. So Stephen.M, as in Mary, dot okay. at gmail.com. C H O. Uh, spell the last name again, please. O E A C H O W S K I. Oh my God. O E A or O D A? O D A. Oh, thank God. Okay. O D A C H O S K I. W W S K I. W S K I. W S K I. W S K I. Yep. H O W S K I. Okay. All right, Noel, can you come in for a second? Of course. Um, Nancy, can you come up for a second, please? Yep, I'm coming. Mm. Nancy, can you read the second part? of the scene. Noelle, can you send it to her? Barbara no, I has- I have, I have the second part of the scene. Great, can you read it with Noelle? Sure. After you work with Jennifer, because Barbara sent me an email to me and Noelle saying she was so sick. Oh dear, she did so well for someone who is not feeling- I, Yeah, well, she's got vertigo so bad I right know, I, I've known about that issue with her for many years and I know it's really yeah. hard. So I, I thought she was feeling better. So she did really well. I'm, I'm sorry to hear. Okay. So Noel, is that okay with you? Nancy's going to be working with both you and and Jennifer. So sure. when we go in the breakout room, we're going. To I'm going to put you, Noel. Okay. I'm going to put you and Jennifer, and then you'll just keep going. Okay. And the second part with Noel. Okay. Okay. All right, Stephen. Did you get Danny's stuff? Not, you know, so not yet. Um, Danny, so I, you, in, in chat, I you, sent you my email address. Okay. That, in case it was, I don't know. It's a long, it's a long. Yeah, uh, I, I, well, I typed it in and then I hit a button and it disappeared. And then, so when did you receive the message? It happens. Yeah, I know. So I, when did you receive my message? I did. It's just, uh, yeah, I guess. I don't want to look. There. No. <laughs> I don't even know where my phone is. Oh. There it is. You can read the text on your phone so you don't have to leave the screen. Yeah. Oh, Marcos is here. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. So forget it. was fun while it lasted, Danny. We would have yeah, crushed it. Nice working with you, Stephen. It was, yeah. Great. Just like last week, man. We crushed it two weeks in a row. Yeah. I know, yeah. Thank All you right. so much, Stephen. Really, that yeah, was very kind of you. Gotcha. I had your name spelled out finally. I had your, I got that part. So, <laughs> so Marco, are you there? Yes, I'm here. All right. So I'm going to put you up with Danny now. Uh, hmm. Wow. Are you ready? I just have to hide my face. <laughs> uh. 
Oh, no, I can't. Wait, sorry. Marco, we yeah, don't yeah, want I... you to hide your face from the camera. <laughs> At least from myself. There you go. All right. Oh, I'll just pin him. I've got you pinned and I've got him pinned. Just the two of you are up there. Okay. Let me know when you're ready, Marco. I just turned the fan off. Okay. Come on, that's him. Wait, sorry. Okay, again. Okay. Come on, that's him. Lawrence, what? Donny? Hey, left. What do you care? Florence, what? Florence, Italy. Donny, why do you want to lie to me, Donny? Did I ever lie to you once all these years about the time of day? I'm not Marco, lying. Hold on, Danny. Marco, you need to put the sides baby in front of you, not to the side of you. Because you're looking to the side and looking back to camera. It's pretty hard for you to do that. There we go. And action, let's start again. Come on, that's him. Florence what, Donnie? Hey, left. what do you care? Florence what, Florence, Italy. Donnie, why do you want to lie to me, Donnie? Did I ever lie to you once all these years about the time of day? I'm not lying. How many fucking times did I have you over for dinner at my fucking house, you fucking rat bastard? Hey, what is the fucking problem? Are we gonna whack this guy or what? I went on a fucking record for you, Donnie. You could walk on the street and punch any man in the mouth before I stood up for you. What is the fucking problem? The fucking federal boat, Donnie. That's our boat. Hold on a minute, left. The boat with Traficante? I ain't the same boat. Don't tell me that ain't the same boat, Donnie. That's a fucking federal boat. That's a Taiwan-made boat. There's only five like that in the world. I really don't think that's the same boat, Left. Look at that. You see that? The left hand. That's like my name. Maybe it's her, her brother's a fucking agent. How would I know? I thought he was in real estate. Ain't the question, Donnie. You still ain't answered me why we're, a, we're fucking on a fucking federal fucking boat. You're right, Left. I'm a fucking rat. You're a rat? I met your girls. I talked to Tommy for you. I don't know how many fucking times. I don't know how many times I had dinner with you. We lived together, Left. Five fucking years. Partners. If I had a hundred bucks in my pocket, I gave you half. And the whole time, I was a fucking rat. You're right. Donnie, did I say you was a rat, Donnie? You'd have to be the biggest fucking mutt in the history of the mafia. <laughs> you fucking lax, Donnie. Don't get on your high horses. Shit, he's up again. How the fuck am I supposed to explain this to Sonny? You ask me, it's the funniest fucking thing in the world. Those fucking agents could scam senators and congressmen. And meanwhile, we had a party on their boat and they didn't get a fucking thing on us. Sonny will laugh his ass off. Where's the joke, Donnie? We outsmarted the agents. We got a higher IQ than the fucking congressman. You got so many black marks on you now, Donnie. A fucking Einstein couldn't count them. What black marks? That time with the luggage and uh, the other time. Are we gonna whack this fucking guy or what? I ain't no fucking lot, Donnie. How the fuck did I know it was a federal fucking boat? I die with sir. I'm your best friend, Donnie. You're right, left. 
You're my best friend. Donnie, don't say nothing. Don't say nothing to them. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. I won't, I won't say, I won't, I won't say, I won't, no, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm, I'm, I'm we're cool. So, wait a minute, Marco, when you've, are you being shot? Huh? What, what happened to you? Yes, I, I was, I was, uh, cops came and, you know, just, you know, just all over, all of, um. They shot you? No, they just, they came, they, uh, they came to arrest us. This, this is, I was exactly. going to, I was going to pull the trigger on him, uh, or, or I just brought out my gun and, and then cops came. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, Marco, so let's work on that physically for a second because it confused me. Um, yep, I, yeah. Can you see me? Yes. Because I can't see me. So maybe point the gun and then put your hands behind and struggle behind your back. Don't say nothing to them. Do you see what I'm saying? So you point the gun and then it shows them grabbing you and handcuffing you behind your back. Don't say nothing, don't say nothing. Instead of what's happening is you're falling over in your chair and I, I don't understand what's going on. Is that okay? Or do you want to think of something else? That's okay. Uh, sorry, because I couldn't see you. I was, yeah. Oh, you can't see me? Yeah, now I can see you. Okay. Again, so, sorry. Yeah, that's okay, sweetheart. Uh, what I was saying is that, so when you, when you point the gun slowly, which could be really cool, and then you see them come in, you can either drop the gun, put your hands up like that, or if they wrestle the gun from you, they wrestle it, they've got your hands behind your back. I think it'd be easier for you to point the gun and then you drop it. Yeah, you're it. right. Don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. Yeah, agreed. Okay. Actually, we, we had to improv the ending because there's a third party that's supposed to come in, and maybe yeah, that's why it, we we were a bit lost yeah. on how, how on how to end this for a while. We actually did want to do that scene. Danny was suggesting we just drop it, but so that's why we're. Yeah. But yeah, I think. No, I like that. I like. I, I really. I like that ending. I'm just physically showing you a way to do it and they yeah. drop their hands and wait, you know. Okay. You know. So I really liked how you did it. I, it, it. My question is, Danny, did you rat on him? No, I, I, um, I've been, um, I'm trying to be sarcastic so he doesn't, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm keeping the lie up. Um, no, I haven't. I don't think I ratted on him. The, the police just caught on and it was time to take me out of the, you know, I've been undercover. It was time to take me out. So they come in, jump on us and, and they take me away. They take are, us all away, but they take me back. To, are you working for them now? Yeah, I'm an FBI agent. Yeah. Ah, uh, Marco. But being left. We're, we're, we're both friends. Yeah. Yeah, we're both mafia, except that there's a photo that comes out in Newsweek magazine where he's actually partying with the FBI. So that's the that's the photo I was trying to show to him. Yeah, no, I got that. You did that very well. But do you know that he's turned it? He really is FBI. Well, we seem to have. I don't think had, you know it. I don't think you yeah, know the it. The photo. Yeah, I know from the photo. Oh, that's yeah. it already. I mean, no other excuses. He's he's. Waiting for the cops. Got it. Figuring it out. Yep. Okay. And, and I had no choice now because I'm mafia and it's how we do things. Despite him being my best friend, I have to actually kill him. And at yeah. that moment, cops arrive. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I want you to improvise this, not with any of the lines. I want it before this all happens. I want it like maybe the day before. You're, you've been playing poker, you're having a nice beer together, 
and you're just kind of talking about old times, all right? About when you were roommates and living together. It'll make it much more poignant when you go in to rehearse. Okay. There's a beer. Cheers. Cheers, Donnie. Remember Cheers. how things were in high school? Remember how we we down bottles and bottles of beer while watching? Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. We've been drinking together for a long time. Yeah. yeah. It, time just went so fast. It's been mm -hmm. what, 20 years? Yeah, yeah, it has, yeah. Well, yes. it's good, man. We're gonna, we've just been uh, whacking people. Nice whacking people with you. <laughs> I know. Sorry, maybe I've had too much. I don't know. <clears throat> I know. Who would have thought we'd end up here? I always yeah. thought, you know, I always thought you'd you'd be a lawyer or you know, you'd be you've always wanted to be a cop. Well. Yeah, I uh <clears throat> if there was one of us, yeah, if there was one of us joining the force, it would have been you. Yeah, well, I guess, uh, yeah, I like that. I, I, I like being undercover. It's, uh, Fuck. Fuck. yeah. Fuck. Um, yeah. Do you know that I'm a cop? I, I'm just thinking for this scene. Sorry, I'm coming out of the character. No, scene. no. It, 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 okay. Why are you, don't ever I'm come so, out of the character, Danny. I'm so, okay, I'm sorry. But, Okay. Don't do that to Marco. No, you guys are just sitting I'm around sorry. having a beer. Okay. All right. I'm, okay. I'm sorry. He only thinks you may be. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I'm not a cop. I, I never, I, I never, uh, you know, I never, drew, I thought about it. I wanted to, I wanted to be a cop. But, uh, this is so much better, right? I mean, you yeah. can give, you can give your wife whatever she deserves. The kids are in private schools. Huh. What I'm more do you more want? So much. Yeah, yeah, I'm making so much more money. Yeah. Nothing of that would have happened some. if you joined the, if you wore a blue uniform. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't have wanted to wear the uniform. Undercover would have been cool. But uh, yeah, you know, or a homicide detective. I would have liked to have been that. But no, but I don't want to be that. I didn't want to do that because uh, I have to follow rules. I'm my own man here for the most part. And, rules. Uh, you could never could break oh, them. Huh? It. It's so hard for uh, you to break them. Yeah, but uh, but I do it. I can do it because I'm committed. Committed. You've been doing it. You know? So I know you can. You've been doing it. Yeah, we've been yeah, doing it. Yeah, we, yeah, do it. we can shake down. We can shake down one of them fuckers like nobody's business. <laughs> we do yeah. it so well. Wow. Yeah. You throw a mean left, left, lefty. <laughs> yeah. Talk about your your history of your life, where you came from. Yeah. Well. So, not bad for a small town guy, huh? Moved to yep. the big city and uh, moved my way up through the mob. It's pretty cool. I'm making so much money and all I got to do is crack a couple heads here and there. And we all do what you do well. Yeah. Well, you're doing, not doing so bad yourself, Lev. You're, good life. you're a student council treasurer. Money was always just so natural for you. Take your hands away from your mouth, Marco. Yeah. Well, I got to admit, I like money. Who doesn't? So why don't Otherwise, we make a why, yeah? Why don't we make a bet on the next game? Why not? Why don't they make a? Uh, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I left. I, the music is so loud. I missed what you said. 
Why don't you place a bet on the next game? Oh, okay. Yeah, Me? well, speaking yeah. of money. Yeah, here we go. 100 bucks. You match it? Come on, you can match it. 100 bucks. Come on, you can go higher than that. Higher? All right. 300. 300 bucks. 300 bucks. 300 bucks then. Oh. 500 bucks. Wow, so you oh, really want to go higher? Bucks. Yeah, come on, you can do it. 500 bucks. It, you've never really had a limit once you go for it, right? Yeah, well, I'm going to win. You know, I'm going to whoop your ass here. So why don't you rack up the balls and let's, uh, let's get to me taking your money. But you did lose so much when you went to Monte Carlo, right? Yeah, I lost a little bit. Just before you went to Florence. You did go to Florence, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I went back there to see family. You, know, you have family in Florence? Yeah, you have family Great grandmother. How come I never heard that? Never really came up, did it? Aren't you from Milan? No, I'm from Florence. I'm most certain you said you were from Milan. Hmm. No, no, I, I, no, I never said Milan. Where in Florence are you from? I, mean, I say, oh, I, I visited Milan, but. Uh, where, in, where in Florence, in Florence are I, you from? I, I'm not from Florence. My great grandmother is in Florence. Oh. I, I, I was raised in Kansas, small town in Kansas. Okay, good. So now I'm going to put you guys in breakout rooms. All right, I really liked what you did, Marco. I know you ran in from a, another day of hard work, but you still kept your energy up for this. I don't want you touching your mouth or your face as much as you did, but you did a really good job. And Danny, um, I, I think you did a really good job, but I want you to even go harder. You are a double crossing son of a gun. Nothing means anything to you. Oh, kind of more uh, like, like more of an I, asshole. Sort. I think, no, no, don't judge yourself. You're not an asshole. You're being forced to turn in your closest, oldest friend. You don't want to do okay. it. And that's why Marco at the end says, don't tell anybody. Don't tell him. Don't tell him, Dan. Don't tell him. But the, in reality, you, you're now in a, you're boxed in a corner. Yeah. You don't want him to shoot you, but you betrayed him. Yeah. You had to. You had to. And and you know what? There's a side of you that, that doesn't give a shit. So Oh right, yeah. Okay. All right, everybody come back so I can put you in your rooms. That's uh Come back, everyone, and I'm going, good work. Anybody, did you like that last one? It was nice, wasn't it? So, yeah. Nancy, I'm, I'm going to do the breakout rooms. So, um, what you will do is Nancy um, will go in with uh, both Jennifer and Noel. And uh, let me see, assign. assign. Oh, room one. Hold on, room's not started. I have to go do this all over again. Breakout rooms. Doom, 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 doom. Out of room, out of room, out of room. Four, five, six, seven. Okay, so in the first room, the sign, I'm gonna be putting Jennifer, Noel, and Nancy. Okay, and in room two, I'll be putting Danny and Marco. And in room three, Kenneth and Stephen. All right, I'm opening the rooms. Please accept them. How long do you guys want? It's uh, about nine o'clock right now, 8.56. Do you want like 15 minutes? Okay, 15 minutes. So uh, at 9.15, you'll be coming back.
All right, join your rooms.
ど。
Okay, discover. And this will be choice to be the choice. That's my page, choice. Choice to be. Six. Choose to be another. Seven. Continue. Eight. And there's this. And there's the book.
And sign off. This is Hello. All right, did that give you all enough time? Yeah, just about. I, I, I sent you a uh, scenes. Your scenes have already sent you for next week. Tony, I'm not going to be here next week, remember? I remembered. I yeah. gave uh, uh, Stephen, you're going to be doing a scene with Jennifer, and you'll be doing a scene with uh, Barbara. I'm doing a scene with both of them, or I'm doing one scene with Barbara and one scene with Jennifer? One scene with Barbara and one scene with Jennifer. I didn't think of giving you Perfect. a Perfect. I could give you no, a No, no, you're good. Time, but I figured. No, no, that's. Okay. <laughs> that works. Did, you know, I didn't even think of that. That's how stupid I am. I just was like, hey. 
All right, so let's start with Nancy and Jennifer, and then we're going to go into Nancy and Noel. Oh, I got to get my cat off my briefcase. Go away, Murray. Go away. Ah, uh, you cracked me up, Nancy. Go away. He's not going to call you. He was sleeping on my briefcase, and it's a prop I need. <laughs> Where's Jennifer? I'm trying to find Jennifer. Yeah, she's Jennifer. there. All right, Cindy and Jennifer. All right, the rest of us turn off our cameras. All right, here we go. Fuck is it? Catherine Murphy. Catherine Murphy. Yes, Catherine, your attorney. Sarah? Sarah, are you okay? No, I'm not fucking okay. Catherine Murphy, my fucking attorney. Why did you let them out on bail? I didn't let them out. It's standard procedure. Well, then who let them out? Hmm? If you didn't, then who did? And what are you talking about standard procedures? Until a jury finds you guilty, you're free if you can post bail. They posted bail. That's the system. Fuck the system in and fuck you too. Sarah, can I come in? I mean, that guy on TV? He made it sound like I did a live sex show or something for them. Well, that's not the last time that's going to happen. Can I come in, please? You really want to come in? Yes. You really, really want to come in here? Yes. OK. Come on in. The bartender at the dugout said that you were sick. Well, the bartender should shut the fuck up then. You're looking for me? Here I am. Yeah, I, I see that. I was worried. Well, I had to go to the doctors and nobody at my work knows. And what are you looking at? Nothing. I, I, I wasn't looking at anything. What, you don't like my apartment or something? I wasn't looking at anything. Okay. Okay. Well, you want to see it or something? Do you like something to drink? I know I could use a drink personally. Uh, no, thank you. No. What are you? On the clock? Come on, live it up, Captain Murphy, my attorney. I'm a little crazy. No, thanks. You usually drink at three o'clock? Sometimes you smooth out the edges. I'm sure you know how that goes. Listen, I was thinking about it. What time were you born? I already told you, I don't believe in astrology. Well, does it look like a give a shit? I mean, you <laughs> believing in it doesn't matter. It's my believing in it that matters. So what time? At night, seven o'clock, August 9th. Where at? Portland. Do you always drink to smooth out the edges? Portland where? Portland, Oregon. Do you always have a drink to smooth out the edges? So, Portland, Oregon, August 9th at 7 p.m. You know, I'm going to need to get a year out of you at some point. Sarah? No. No, I don't always drink, okay? I mean, sometimes I'll take a hit of pot or something. Why? Do you want some? No, thanks. Did you have anything to drink before you went to the mill or smoke anything? Half a joint, a couple of beers. It's nothing heavy. While you were there? I don't know. Okay, I, I don't know. But listen, it wasn't like I was falling over drunk or anything. End of first part. <laughs> it was really good. Really good, Jennifer. You, you really went to play her a toughie, and I love it. You know? How'd you feel about that? Next week, you have a comedy. But to, I think keeping you guys in and out of balance of comedy and, and, and seriousness is really good. But you did right. a great job. Good work, sweetheart. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good, good, Nancy. All right, let's bring up, uh, uh, let's bring up Missy Noel. Hold on. And thank you, Nancy, for doing this with the two lovely ladies. I, I'm just Barb did such a great job. I'm shocked. I thought she was done with her vertigo. So I, I mean, I well, for her, for her.
for her to say she's really sick, she's really sick. Oh yeah, no, I think she just came across so well. She didn't seem sick, so good job for her. So, yeah. okay. Ready in a while? Sorry, yeah. How are you dressed? What the fuck is that supposed to mean? It means were you dressed provocatively, showing a lot of cleavage, see-through What the fuck difference is, does it matter how I was dressed? I mean, I could have been wearing a nun's habits for all they care. They tore it off, off me anyways. But did how you dress make them think you could have sex with you? What the fuck? Did you put on a show? What the hell are you trying to say? You saw me at a hospital, right? I mean, what, you think I asked for that? If, if that's really what you think, you can get the hell out of my house. Why didn't you tell me you had a record? Fuck you. I ain't got no records. You want to tell me about it? All right. Look, I was always helping my girlfriend move in a U-Haul. Okay. And then we went into this cup, right? And he sees we have a broken tail light. So he starts going through her stuff, her desk, and then he found half a gram of Coke which wasn't a lot okay but it wasn't mine anyways it was her it wasn't my stuff it was her stuff her car not mine so why is it still in the book i don't fucking know you tell me i mean you the expert here with standard procedure they said that they'll do whatever expunged yeah expunged yeah have you ever made love to more than one man at a time what the fuck kind of question is that? It's the kind of question you're going to be asked on the stand. You're also going to be asked if Larry or any other man has hit you and if you liked it. You're going to be asked about your drug bust and how many times a day you have to smooth out the edges and how many joints and how often you go to bars alone and whether or not you wear underwear when you go to them. Which diseases you've caught and how many abortions you've had and I will object to all those questions. And sometimes the judge will sustain me and sometimes not. Well, you got a really handsome system here, Catherine Murphy. Sarah, you're a witness. And it is the defense's job to show the jury that you're a rotten witness because you've got a rotten character. But you think I got a rotten character? No. No, Sarah, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that's what they're going to say. You ain't gonna defend me because I'm sort of a local, local bimbo class, right? No, I, I, I didn't say that. Jesus Christ, why is this so difficult with you? That's because you're fucking Libra, that's why. Because you make me you make me have to be strong with you so that you get it. But I'm tough on you so I can be even tougher on them. I'm on your side, Sarah. Do you get it? Do you believe that? Well, this bastard's got to tell. Is that what you want? I want those motherfuckers put away forever. Well, Sarah, we finally agree on something. No, you ain't listening to me. I want those motherfuckers put away forever. You got that? I'm listening. I got it. That's what we'll do. Good work. Good work. How did you uh, feel about it? It was really good. Noel, you did an excellent job. Uh, Nancy. You did an excellent job. Anybody want to put uh, any words in? Because it was both both Jennifer and Nancy, two different characters. Um, what do you guys think? People? People. I still think it was great, yeah. I really did. I, I thought both of you did really good jobs. I I, uh, I I really dug this whole scene. I, I like flipping the part and playing the Jodie Foster part too. That was fun for me to get angry. Yeah. 
curse out, curse them out, and um, um, you know, I I just thought it was a it's a really juicy, meaty scene to dig yeah, into. It is juicy and meaty. The thing is, and for everybody, what you Noel, neither you nor Jennifer did this, but for any actor, it's really easy to get lost in anger. Really easy to just play angry all the time. It's real easy to, you know, play funny. All these are result direct, what we call in acting result directions. So if a director ever comes up to you and says, hey, Noel, play her more angry. Noel, you have to say like, for example, in the back of your mind, I'm angry because I was just raped by a, a group of men, I've been humiliated. You know, you have to, you have to make it um, something that has just happened or Nancy, I'll play her more frustrated. I'm frustrated because I can't seem to get through to her. Do you know what I mean? You have to make it specific things because otherwise if you just play frustrated or you just play angry, it comes out superficial. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to all of you? Sure. So you guys did a good job of playing all the depths of all those emotions. Uh, I was real proud of you both. Good work. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, girls. It was interesting to see you, Jennifer. I was too tired earlier, but from the first take, good job, really. Thank you. You too. <laughs> okay, let's bring in Stephen Otachowski. Where are you, Stephen? And Kenneth Fu. Oh. 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 <sighs> Yeah. Good, Ken. Can you hear me? All okay. right. Yeah, yep. great. Great. Now, Mr. Harrison, do you feel like answering some questions? <laughs> yes, I do. I'll try to keep them uninflammatory. You're too kind. Not at all. I would prefer to hanging judge. Either way, I decide I am a hanging judge. Now, Mr. Harrison, the medical director and the psychiatrist claim that you are not capable of making an informed decision. That's right. They're wrong. What do you mean? It means that they're good doctors and they won't let a patient die if they could help them. Do you think you're suffering depression? Well, I'm completely paralyzed. I think I'll be insane if I wasn't depressed. Yeah, but wanting to die must be strong evidence that your mental state has gone far beyond simple depression. I do not want to die. Then what the hell is this case all about? Make that read, what is this case all about? Uh, there was a hell, and I believe he says shit. So maybe you want to cross that out. <sighs> Sorry. I do not want to die because as far as I'm concerned, I'm dead already. I really want the doctors to recognize that fact. I cannot believe this is condition constitute life in any sense of that word. Legally, you're alive. I think I could even challenge that. Any reasonable definition of life is the idea that it will be self-supporting. Now, isn't it true that in heart transplant cases, it's legal to take someone's heart if they can only be kept alive by respirator and other medical hardware. There also has to be no brain activity at all, and yours is certainly working. Certainly working, and certainly stainly. That's what we're here to decide. Your Honor, I'm not asking anyone to kill me. I'm only asking to be discharged from this hospital. Which will kill you. And that's exactly my point. I'll spend the rest of my life in this hospital with everything in it geared to keeping me my brain alive. And I will never have a possibility whatsoever of being able to direct a good goddamn thing 
And now, as far as I'm concerned, that's an act of deliberate cruelty. Wouldn't it be more cool for society to let people die when, with some effort, it could save them? No, no, no. Because the cruelty is not a question of saving someone's life or letting them die. The cruelty is that a choice is removed from the person concerned. I would like to decide myself what happens to my body. A man who is desperately depressed is not capable of making a reasonable choice. Well, as you said, Your Honor, that's the question to be decided. All right, you tell me, you tell us. Why is it reasonable choice that you decide to die? All right, all right, all right. The most important part of my life was my work. And my most valuable asset I had for that was my imagination. Now it's just too damn bad that my mind wasn't paralyzed with my body. Now my mind, which was my most precious possession, has become my enemy. And it tortures me. It tortures me with thoughts of what might have been and what might be to come. And I can feel my mind very slowly breaking up. Now, you take women, for example. I used to, I used to love, love what they were and how they thought and how they smelled. And now I dread it when they come into the room because I loathe the way they make me feel, you know? I'm filled with an absolute sense of outrage that you, who have no knowledge of me whatsoever, has the power to condemn me to a life of torment because you cannot see the pain. There's no blood, there's no pain. screaming because you cannot see the pain. Your Honor, if you saw the mutilated animal on the side of the road, you shoot it. I'm only asking for a simple kind of the simple act of civility that you give to the animal. And I'm not asking anyone to commit an act of violence. Just take me somewhere and leave me. And if you don't, if you don't, then you come back here in five years and you see what a piece of work that you have done here today. Mr. Harrison, you left us a lot to think about. We'll break for 50 minutes. I'll come back with the first. That was good. Damn. Kenneth, big role for you. And you really did it well. Oh, thanks. Really? Yeah, hard. you did great, Kenny. Yeah, oh. hard role for you, Stephen, because it's just pretty much listening. But it was yeah. real interesting. Yeah. And we also prepared like switching roles. <laughs> Did you like that? Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody come back for that. Oh. I, I thought we want to do the, uh, <laughs> the switching role. OK. No, I just wanted you to switch roles to see how it felt. Oh, okay. If we have time, I'll let you do the switching oh. of the roles. What did you guys feel about that? I, I felt the both times, uh, Kenneth, um, the intensity of emotion. I mean, I really, I really bought it. <laughs> yeah, I did too. I, Kenny, you're really, you're really starting to go for it. Oh, uh, to be fair, because I, I've been making that kind of argument to my mom all the time. Yeah. So yeah, my life story. So wasn't even. Ah. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. I won't go, I won't go into it too much there, I but know. okay. Yeah. All right. Any other comments? Okay, so we're gonna go to Danny and Marcos if we have time at the end. Um, I'll let you guys switch. Okay. Let's go to Danny and Marcos because I do wanna do an improv with you for the ending here. Pen, add pen, Marcos, add pen. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Come on, that's him. Florence what, Donnie? Hey, Lip, what do you care? Florence what? 
Florence, Italy. Donnie, why do you want to lie to me, Donnie? Did they ever lie to you once all these years about the time of day? I'm not lying. How many fucking times did they have you over for dinner at my fucking house, you fucking rat bastard? I left. What is the problem? Are we going to whack this guy or what? I went on the fucking record with you, Donnie. You could walk on the street and punch any man in the mouth because I stood up for you. What is the fucking problem? Here. Here, Donnie. That's a fucking federal boat. Donnie, that's our boat. Hold on a minute, Les. The boat with Traficante? Huh, that ain't the same boat. Don't tell me that ain't the same boat. Donnie, that's a fucking federal boat. That's a Taiwan-made boat. There's only five like this in the world. I really, I really don't think that's the same boat, Lev. Look at that. You see that? The left hand, that's like my name. Maybe her brother's a fucking agent. How would I know? I thought he was in real estate. Ain't the question, Donnie. You still ain't answered me why we're fucking on a fucking federal boat. You're right, Left. I'm a fucking rat. You're a rat? I met your girls. I talked to Tommy for you I don't know how many fucking times. I don't know how many times I had dinner with you, you and Louise. We lived together, Left. Partners. Five fucking years. <laughs> if I had a hundred bucks in my pocket, I gave you half, and the whole time, I was a fucking rat. Yeah, you're right. Donnie, did I ever say you was a rat? <laughs> You'd have to be the biggest fucking mutt in the history of the mafia. You fucking lax, Donnie. Don't get on your high horses. Shit. He's up again. How the fuck am I supposed to explain this to Sonny? You ask me, it's the funniest fucking thing in the world. Those fucking agents could scam senators and congressmen. And meanwhile, we had a party on their boat and they didn't get a fucking thing on us. Sonny will laugh his ass off. Where's the zilk, Donnie? We are smart of the agents. We have a higher IQ than the fucking congressman. <laughs> oh, Donnie. You got so many black marks in your mouth, Donnie. A fucking Einstein couldn't count them. What black marks? That time with the luggage and uh, the other time. Are we going to whack this fucking guy or what? I ain't no fucking mock, Donnie. How the fuck was I supposed to know it was a fucking federal boat? I die with, sir. I'm your best friend, Donnie. You're right, Left. You're my best friend. I'm sorry, Donnie. Oh, no, no. <sighs> no, no. Donnie, don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. I won't. Don't worry. Don't say nothing. I, don't. I, I won't say a goddamn thing. Nothing. I won't. Don't. Don't worry. I won't say anything. Good. That was really good. Marco, I really loved your interpretation. Um, I even liked how the way your voice changed and everything and your body posture. It was really good. Marco, really nicely, well done. Um, Danny, um, I never thought that you were the snitch he said you were until the end, which I really enjoyed. You That's know, good. you played it real innocent until the very end. And then suddenly I began to suspect that what he said was true. And that, I really liked that. That was good. Well, good, yeah, that's what I was trying to do. <laughs> Yeah, it was really, really nice. Everybody come back. 
really nice. Oh, thank you. Uh, anybody else want to say anything about that? Oh, Last so thing? I, I, okay. Yeah, Marco, whoa. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm Mark you in a dark alley. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're a tough guy. Really yeah, played Marco, that well. Marco, you can play gangster. Yeah. Really. Thank so, you. I wanna. I want you guys to do an improv with me. Um, I want you to explore in this. It's it's like a concerto. But instead of instruments, you are going to do emotions. And I want you to explore vocally the emotion. So, for example, oh, you can't see me. I'm going to have to say her name. Usually I'd point to someone. But for example, um, this means make it louder. This means make it softer. This means keep the rhythm going. This means keep you keep the other rhythm going. This means stop. This means all of you stop. Up, low. Keep the rhythm going. You keep the rhythm going. Everybody up, everybody down, stop. I want you to explore the emotion. So who would like to direct me? <laughs> I'll do it. Thank you, Danny. Give me an emotion and I'll show you what I mean so you can understand. It's late at night, but I'll try not to scare my neighbors. Give me an emotion, someone. Anger. Oh, someone. All right, anger. All right, Danny, start to, to conduct me. Oh, yeah. 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 Did you see? I'm exploring all the different vocal patterns of anger. I wasn't just doing ah. Nancy looked confused. No, I'm just uh, trying to absorb this all. <laughs> Long day. All right, do you think, do you all think you understand? Because you're going to make a concerto of this. But it will teach you that it's not just one vocal pattern. There are all kinds of anger. Okay? Everybody, you're looking at me like, Tony, it's late. Why are you doing this to us? But anyway. All right, so someone give Danny an emotion. Happy. Happy. Danny, repeat the emotion, happy. Happy. All right, there you go. Someone give Jennifer an emotion, please. I mean, uh, comedy, I don't know if it's an emotion, like, ha, ha, ha. What's an emotion, please? What? Sorry, I don't know. No, no, sorry. Funny, laughter, is that what you're trying to yeah, say? Yeah, like funny. I love an emotion, though. Ah, okay. Joy, happy? All right, well, that's good. happy. All right, someone give Kenneth an emotion. Fear? Sad. Fearful, good. Say this, say it, fearful, Kenny. Fearful, okay. Someone give Stephen an emotion. Sad. Sad. Someone give Nancy an emotion. Anxious. Uh. Hmm. Okay, anxious. Someone give Marco an emotion. Mean. Confused, do you consider an emotion? Oh, confused, yes, absolutely. So I'm gonna to point to all of you and I know you don't know where you are, so I'll say your name. Marco, what's your emotion? Confused. Jennifer? Happy. Danny? Happy. Happy and happy? We can have two happies. <laughs> uh, mad? How about mad? 
Jennifer Mad. Mad, okay. Mad. Noel. I don't have any. Sexy. That's a good emotion for Noel. <laughs> you can say words, by the way, you guys. <laughs> Kenneth. Uh, fearful. Nancy. Anxious. Stephen. Bad. So if you were an uh, orchestra, and if you were in front of me, I would just have to point to you. I may say two names at once, and you'll still watch me. I may raise Jennifer up, and I may push Marcos down, OK? Here we go. Jennifer. Uh, why? Uh, uh, why? Uh, uh, come on. Uh, uh, come on. Uh, uh, uh. Danny. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 yes. Ye oh, oh. <laughs> Marcos. that really good you guys <laughs> nancy <laughs> now i'm going to point to you two or three of you at the same time here we go danny go <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. Noel? Oh, oh, how? Oh, oh, oh. Stephen, Noel. Oh. Stephen, Noel. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh no. Oh, no. Oh. Come on. Oh, oh my God. Oh, 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 please. Nancy, Stephen? Uh, mm, no, oh, no, 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 Mm -hmm. oh. All together, here we go. Jennifer, Danny, Marco, go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, 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 this is wonderful. Oh, yes. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Noel, Kenny, Nancy, and Stephen, here we go. Stephen? Oh, oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, oh, shit. Watch me. Noel. Oh. 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 Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Excellent, you guys. <laughs> this would play out well if we were all wearing straight jackets. It's so funny. 
I, I, I couldn't even stop laughing. I was <laughs> yeah, I had to close my window so that my neighbors didn't hear about it. <laughs> it's really a fun improv because in many ways it shows you how to explore that emotion, you know, and, and you begin to find out that there's many different sounds to an emotion. You know, anger is just not all, blah, 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 blah. it isn't. There's many different volumes of anger in many different ways. As we found out with sexy, you know, Noel did sexy very well because there were different, oh yeah, mm, yeah. Well, anyway, you guys, Marco, I'm so glad you were able to join us and you look like you're ready to fall apart and fall asleep, poor guy. Um, all of you did really good tonight. I sent you your scenes. I know you're missing Nancy next week. Um, um, Antonia may be back. And if she comes back, I'll put her with one of you. Stephen, for this part, thanks for doing two scenes. And uh, yes, Jennifer. I had a question real quick. So I looked over and like, I just checked the email of the thing that you just sent us and you sent it to both me and Danny which is fine if you want me to do it with Danny, but I just, did you want me to do it with Steven or? Who is did it the it back to the future scene? It's, what scene is it? I'm not sure what scene it is, but you just sent it to me and Danny and I know you had mentioned me and Steven, but it's fine if I do it with Danny. Like, I don't mind either one, but I'm just. Um, oh, got, you sent. Uh, you Noel sent is with Steven. Yeah. Noel is with Steven. Okay. Jennifer, you're with Danny. Okay. And Steven is doing it again with Barbara. With Barb. Yeah. Okay. Me and Barbara, me and Noel. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Don't get me confused. But well, I just didn't want to be confused I later. I'd rather be confused now. <laughs> I know. Thank you, sweetheart. Um, but I know. Um, uh, and then Marco, I sent you yours, and I think you can with Kenneth, yeah. Um, but if Antonia comes back, I may have you both, I may change the scene to both of you doing it with a woman. So it's just because we have Nancy who's going away. Um, and Antonia has been away, she was sick. So it's been kind of all over the place, but good work tonight, I was really, Really please, these were not easy scenes, you guys. And you did them really, really, really well. You all did. I mean, I, I really enjoy, and the improv was really intensely wonderful, you know. And Marco, I wondered why you kept asking Danny about Florence. And then I, in the improv, and then I realized it starts off with them saying Florence. And uh, that was really interesting that you picked that up. I didn't. That really nice. Yes, you had a question, Marco. Yeah. So before I, we say goodbye to this side, this scene study, can we do a reverse next week? Uh, I don't mind. Nancy's not going to be here, but Barbara, whoever wants to do it. No, Danny and I can, you know, switch reverse roles. Yes, you could. Because we actually also, you know, just like Kenneth, we also tr tried it and I, yeah. Yeah, why don't you just do it at the beginning? Yes. Yeah, okay. All right. And Kenneth and Stephen, if you want to do it at the beginning, you can too. Sure. I don't think Jennifer or Noel, you don't really want to switch. You'll probably we've just already ran through it together, switching it and stuff. Yeah. So we're okay. Yeah. Yes, Marco, you can. Just will you do me a favor and remind me that you're switching right away, and then we'll do the other scenes. Sure. Okay. All right, kids. Well, have a good sleep. It was great to see you all. Mwah. Good night. Have a great week. Good night, everyone. Guys. Have a good night. Good night, Marco. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye, 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 bye. Bye. Bye, see you. Bye.